There are a lot of videos, lectures, and other resources online by Virgil Abloh of him spreading his design philosophies and teaching young people how to start their own brand, get better at design, and unlock their full potential. And you know what they say, those who can't do, teach. <laughs> Except Virgil did do. He did do a lot. And I really appreciate him teaching as much as he did and helping young creatives because he didn't have to and most people in his position unfortunately don't. They're too busy creatively directing or whatever that means. Virgil was influential and inspirational in a lot of really good ways. I definitely credit some of my initial interest in fashion design to him. At one point I actually wanted an off-white hoodie. But why do I say that? Why did I say I actually wanted? Like it would have been cringe. Fashion is funny because people always love to use extreme language and be so judgmental. And I think that the people who blindly hate off-white are just as bad as the people who blindly love it. Virgil's design work rarely resonated with me that deeply. However, for other reasons, I still hold him in high regard. Maybe not for his design, but for taking risks, doing things differently, making an effort to explain his choices and give other people outsiders a chance. And through him talking about his design, I better understand it and have more respect for it. It's still not my thing, but I definitely thought his later work was better and him talking about it along the way gave his work a perspective that I wasn't able to see on my own. It also creates more of a discussion if, you know, the artist is actively talking about their work rather than just putting it out there for public interpretation alone. So today I wanted to discuss Virgil Abloh, his impact, design language, and what I liked and disliked about him personally. Of course, this is all just my opinion. In fashion, art, design, whatever, I truly don't think there are any right or wrong opinions. In the end, art is valued by its impact, not how good or bad it is. And Virgil was undeniably impactful. I spent some time refamiliarizing myself with Virgil's ethos, but before we dissect that, I think a good way to start understanding him and his mindset is through his come up and earlier brands before Off-White. As a young lad, he grew up in Chicago and he was a very active kid. He didn't waste his time on video games or League of Legends like you nerds these days. He played soccer and skated and liked rap. Take this as a sign. Delete League of Legends, stop buying clothes, go outside. I tried it, haven't went back. There's some cool stuff out there. Ever heard of Pokeballs? Oh, perfection. Anyway, when he went to college to study civil engineering and then a master's in architecture, he prioritized the stuff he did in his free time, like DJing and graffiti, just as much as his studies. And while studying architecture, he had started working with Kanye. He was very prolific in the amount of things he did, and even up until his death, with the amount of work that he put out. However, I don't consider that to be entirely a good thing, because if you think about it, if you do so many things, even if you put in as much time as you efficiently can into all those things, how good can you really get? We'll get back to that point a bit later. I'm not saying you have to be hyper fixated on one thing to be good, but um, Virgil does. <laughs> it takes less for a brand concept. The, the less it is, the stronger it is. The more when it comes to a brand, he encourages people to keep it simple and concise, rather than trying to incorporate all of the things that make you, you. He thinks that it's better to focus on one thing and have all of those other things incorporated down the line through collabs and stuff, which I sort of agree on, but I think we differ on the reasoning. His reasoning to focus on one thing is so that the brand is more easily recognizable to other people. A lot of things going on doesn't create an easily perceivable and understandable brand identity. For many people, they usually like a brand because it represents a part of their identity, right? So if you want to reach more people, you have to do less things or just one thing. I think that focusing on more aspects makes a much niche identity that less people will relate to but will relate to much stronger. So really I think it's up to personal preference and your skills as a designer to adequately portray multiple ideas in one brand. For me the reason to focus on one thing though is more to make a better quality end product. I agree that it also helps in spreading your brand and making it easily re recognizable but Virgil often puts emphasis on exposure over quality and anything else. You probably know that Kanye and him wanted to enter fashion together and instead of doing a design course, they were told that they didn't really need to and, and that they could just intern somewhere. So Fendi was the move. It's also important to note that him, Kanye and the gang, the, these couple of knuckleheads, were kind of considered outsiders and they couldn't get into all the fashion shows that they wanted to. As well as not being in the fashion industry up until that point, it was probably also because they were black and European high fashion was even more predominantly white than it is today. I also think at this point, uh, the lack of a formal training in fashion design made Virgil think differently about his priorities in fashion. Before we talk about Off-White, Virgil had two previous brands, Bean Trill and Pyrex Vision. Bean Trill was started in London by him and his DJ friends as a DJ collective that also sold merch. That merch ended up becoming bigger than the DJing as they collabed with big brands and had their celebrity friends wearing it everywhere. Here's one thing about Virgil's earlier success that's hard to ignore. I think a lot of the success is due to Virgil's celebrity connections. Whatever he made, they would have worn and it would have become popular because that's how celebrities work. That's influencer marketing. And I mean, he had put in the work making those connections. So of course, take advantage of that. But I can't help but think how much of his early success was from that hype aspect rather than the pure design. They were just experimenting with it as a brand. They sold low quality items for crazy prices like $100 shoelaces. And it seems like Bintrill was an experiment to see how far he could go 
with that hype model. I think that the marketing of a product should be influenced by the product, but it seems like the design process was influenced by the marketing. It's like they made something based on how much hype it would create. I'm glad that he could acknowledge that it was bad design and was able to move on to Pyrex Vision, <laughs> Virgil's swag boy era. But I don't know how much of an evolution Pyrex really was from Bintrill. So quick story to Pyrex, he claims it was meant to be a short-lived brand and he described it as like a short movie. And you can tell at this point that Virgil had a lot of influence because you have to if you plan on running a brand for a year and hope to profit from it. With the brand, Virgil wanted to highlight what America viewed as the only career paths available to black people. Sport, symbolized by the number 23, Michael Jordan's jersey number, and drug dealing, symbolized by the word Pyrex, which was the name of the brand of glassware commonly used for synthesizing drugs. And Pyrex vision was Virgil's youthful rebellion against that idea. Now, I think it's easy to look at this design from today's perspective and call it bad, as it is very of its time. But it's clear to me what he emphasizes in his design, and that's branding. It's not Pyrex if Pyrex isn't written on it and it doesn't have some sort of stripes. And again, the biggest discussion and criticism about the brand didn't come from the design itself. It came from the prices. These were just screen printed champion blanks selling for hundreds of dollars. I wouldn't call the designs very complex at all, but it doesn't seem like they were supposed to be. There was some substance as the references came from legitimate relevant places. However, I think from these projects, Virgil learned that he didn't need to design the products that well or, or obsess over the design for it to be successful. It was more beneficial to design the branding, marketing, and environment around them. To give more context, I saw a Zoom interview where he talked about how he was designing a dented candle. And he said that if you put that candle in an all-white room, people automatically view it more critically and as art, right? But next to a bin, it's just another piece of trash that few people are interested in. I like picking stuff off the ground, so I would be interested in it. And so instead of putting so much effort into designing the piece of art that nobody will pay attention to, put more effort into designing the room. A simple but effective analogy, right? Analogy or metaphor? I'm going to say analogy. I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going to say analogy. <laughs> And I think that analogy is a great representation of Virgil's design language and why I didn't like it. Because the emphasis was not on the individual products, but the branding and marketing elements surrounding the products, which were done well clearly by how successful Off-White became. By pricing Pyrex as he did for low quality goods, that was him setting up the room around his clothes. People were more interested in them because he was presenting them as a luxury item. So they were supposed to be compared to other luxury items and brands, not other streetwear brands. He did the same with Off-White, but improved the quality of his pieces by setting up in Milan. That's also why he was able to be so prolific and have so many side projects. He didn't focus on perfectionism in each product. He took ready-made products and changed them by 3%, as he'd say. And the reason his products got so much attention was because of him setting the stage by going against the norm at the time, making streetwear luxury, putting it on his celebrity friends, getting articles written about him and his brands on Hypebeast, doing hundreds of collaborations. His brand was everywhere and a part of that exposure model is constantly releasing items so you're always on people's minds. He made me realize the importance of everything else other than the actual design of your clothes and how powerful that could be. But I feel like Virgil emphasized it too much to a point, especially earlier on and with his collabs, which made me see that a lot of his products weren't that purposeful or meaningful to me. Just him stamping an item with his branding and moving on to the next. I'm not praising Virgil for outsmarting the need for his supposedly good design. I'm also not saying that he had no good design at all and was all about branding and exposure. His the whole design philosophy of slightly changing ready-made products is definitely a very successful method. By changing a ready-made product like a Nike shoe just enough to make it new, it's way easier for people to get behind it because it's relatively the same familiar product but refreshed in our minds and so it feels new and more appealing. I think the 10 Nike owned shoes that he remakes are perfect examples of items that are really not changed much at all compared to like a Comme des Garçons Nike which <laughs> doesn't always evoke the feeling of familiarity when you see one. And his design method is successful in the sense that you'll sell a lot of units, especially if it's backed by a great marketing strategy, but successful in the sense that you're creating great feats of art and fashion design? In my opinion, no. In fact, there are more negative implications to what I think was Virgil's idea of success. I really dislike the idea of changing and repackaging existing products so slightly. For example, by adding a zip tag and a word onto it and selling it like a new item. To me, there is a negligible difference between this and the regular Air Jordan 1. But most people don't seem to really think about that, and at the time I didn't. All I see now is sort of lazy design that isn't thought-provoking or necessary, and all it promotes is mass consumerism. I know I'm back to complaining about capitalism, but yes, there's a but. <laughs> Oh, brother, this guy stinks! These shoes and all of these boring collabs that these big companies come out with just seem like a marketing ploy to sell the same product over and over. Is it really worth it? There is no need for innovation at Nike anymore. When is the last time they released a new silhouette?
I know collabs shine a light on smaller brands, but there are also so many other negative aspects that seem to be ignored for the sake of exposure. I'm going to save that topic of collab culture for another video, so please do save any relevant comments for that video. Anyway, Virgil was very influential and encouraged people to make their own stuff, and through his mindset towards design, he kind of made it seem easy. I know Virgil didn't advocate for people to design like him. He wanted people to find their own personal design language. And I think there was substance to a lot of his later collections, and you can find pages of show notes explaining his team's decisions for his Louis Vuitton shows. However, he can only really speak on what he knows and how he works. So that's what he did. And people take things so literally and just copied him and his models for success. He definitely had a big part in causing the spawn of these and these and God forbid these. I made a TikTok about how I dislike how a lot of fashion is just a new graphic on the same silhouette, like a standard hoodie or whatever, and people eat it up. And that's what painting on your Air Force Ones are, or taking a dunk and changing the swoosh. My problem isn't even with the quality of the art, it's that you're using something as expensive and unsustainable as a Nike shoe as your canvas to make pretty substanceless art and then selling it as your own. And what about the amount of streetwear startups that Virgil inspired with his ideology of branding is key and success is equal to how much units you sell and how influential you become and not how highly people regard your art. We then get brands that plaster Asian girls with guns everywhere and just a load of off-white clones. One purpose of him teaching, as he said himself, was so that people didn't have to make the same mistakes as him. But how many people did he send down the wrong path in the first place or how much waste did he inspire people to create to copying his methods? Again, you can't choose how people will employ your teachings in their own work. I get that. But sustainability never seemed to be a thing that Virgil talked about. I can only find one sustainability project he was involved with, which was with Evian, where he created 100% recycled water bottles. I do want to say that this seemingly was a good project and a grant was awarded towards someone working towards sustainability in textile manufacturing. But again, I never saw Virgil talk about it in his own work and influence people in that direction. So that is more the argument I'm making right now. Also, I don't know how much of this project was him or his money. He could have just designed the water bottles and dipped, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You know how wasteful fashion is and how much influence you have? Why not advocate for something in fashion? Because Virgil benefited greatly from how wasteful fashion is. And I know sustainability is an easy argument to bring up to discredit any fashion designer. And you could say that Virgil wasn't any different to his peers on the topic of sustainability. So why am I targeting him specifically? I think it's more relevant when it comes to him because of what I've been saying about his design ideology. It promotes overproduction. Instead of spending a lot of time on one thing to make it extra special and new, he prefers taking a lot of ready-made things, putting his touch on them and releasing them as if they're new products. You're producing more stuff, which is more waste, which pretty much already exists, so you're not really adding much quality either. Sure, it gives you more exposure, but at what cost? I don't think it's just a problem with Virgil, but celebrities in general that don't seem to adequately understand how influential they can be. What Virgil advocated for in his teachings, I do believe was with good intention, and it just seems like sustainability was something that he wasn't that concerned with. Like one reason he released so many things and didn't strive for perfection is because he didn't think there were any negative consequences. He wanted to inspire people, especially people of color. That was something he had as a goal since he started. He inspired me, so in that sense, he was successful, and I commend him for that. But I do see a lot of extreme feelings of love or hatred for him that is definitely inspired by our personal biases. Whether it's because you dislike streetwear and hype culture in general and so he's kind of lumped in there. Or you're black and obviously there's more of a personal connection for you with him. And I completely get that. I once viewed Demna as untouchable in a sense. And I think it was because he was an Eastern European immigrant and I'm an Eastern European immigrant. So to see even one person like you succeeding in a career path that interests you is powerful and inspiring, but can also make you forget that this is still some famous person that you don't know and is a person who does right and wrong things like everyone else. Be inspired by the fact that they look like you, but don't let that stop you properly analyzing everything that they do and making your own conclusions. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, and I've tried to highlight what I perceived to be Virgil's strengths and weaknesses in his teachings. You want to talk about another strength I see in Virgil is that he gave so many outsiders, which he was once himself, a chance. In a Harvard lecture where he was talking about his collaborative furniture project with Ikea, he showed a photo of him working with two teenagers who just DM'd him on Instagram and said that they knew how to use like certain software. And he was like, sure, and they helped him. <laughs> Think about how insane that is and how altruistic that is for him to do. In my video about Demna, I classified Virgil as an industry moneymaker, and I think the points I mentioned in this video shows why I think in some aspects he does fit into that category. But obviously, I said that for the point I was making in that video. He's so much more. In my video about Demna, I mentioned how I felt that Virgil was hypocritical in making Off-White so expensive and then saying you can do it yourself and that Off-White is supposed to inspire you to create your own brand. And I just feel like the reasoning doesn't make sense to me. I think the reason for Off-White being so expensive is his desire to be taken seriously as high fashion, which calls back to him setting the stage for his art. I honestly feel like him just being as successful as he was as an outsider and a minority was inspiring enough. I kind of don't get his thought process in justifying his price tags by saying it's meant to inspire you. It seems more like it was about brand image. 
I don't know, let me know. I don't think anyone can say whether Virgil's impact was a net positive or negative in the same way that there really isn't a definitive answer about how positive or negative anyone's impact is. It, it varies from person to person. But I'm glad he did try to share his perspectives as much as he did through social media so that he could reach way more people who are considered outsiders, like him, and to people who live in countries outside of the US and Europe. I think one way to make fashion a topic that has more of an equal distribution of knowledge among the people who like it is to have more people like Virgil who, is, who actively share their experience and knowledge and efficiently too so people will actually be interested to listen kind of like what i'm trying to do now so thank you virgil for also inspiring me once again it's up to you the viewer to think about how you feel about what virgil says or what i say maybe neither of our outlooks work for you then i implore you to search further there's so much more about him to discuss and i realized that while making this video i still want to talk about him supposedly stealing ideas from smaller designers and from walter of course i didn't really talk much about his actual work at louis vuitton some of what i said does apply to his most recent work like he's a damn louis vuitton eight or four ones man god damn it but i do want to look at them more in depth so i'm going to make separate videos about that so please don't take what i said here today all i have to say about virgil same your comments about those topics for those videos i think in future i will make videos just responding to your comments because this channel is also about me learning and expanding what i know about fashion and i see a lot of great points in the comments and also some misinterpretations of what i say which is fair anyway do let me know how virgil inspired you and what you thought about his teachings and the effect of his impact on anything that i talked about today i may have overlooked some things i haven't seen everything virgil has ever released so please inform me where i may have been wrong thank you for watching and rest in peace virgil ablo is the mic still on somebody make a video of this because i'm just gonna lose four